UnregularRadio.com. Boston's best online radio. Potheads, where activism happens. That was uh, Action Bronson. And uh, we have... Uh, Killer think, track. Killer track, yeah. Chosen by Mr. Derek Frere, of course, over here. And we have... On the phone. Betty Retro from Moms for Marijuana. We are th- thrilled to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we wanted to uh, discuss definitely Moms for Marijuana, but uh, one of the things that got our interest this week is this uh, Marijuana Quilt Project. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. I was hoping you could tell uh, us more about it. Yes, it's our Cannabis Quilt Project that we're working on. It's comparable to the AIDS Project, the AIDS Quilt that was done, um, that was traveled around the country and collected stories of people who were affected by AIDS. Well, we're doing the same thing with cannabis, and we are raising awareness by bringing it around to regional conferences and taking on squares to represent different states, organizations, businesses. Even in Seattle Hemp Fest, uh, Jeannie Hare is doing a Jack Hare Square. We're co- inviting the entire community to come together and put this quilt together to make a visual impact of our society as it's being impacted by cannabis. That's awesome. And I know uh, some local activists, I know you guys had hit us up to do one for uh, talk our show, our station, and I, I was kind of overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. I, I sent Sarah to uh, Nikki Smokes and and uh, the King of Pot, and I know that they're they're working on something with you guys, right? Um, I believe so. We've been having so many people added on every day. We are really thrilled with all the people coming on. I know the King of Pot's supposed to be doing one. Um, as I said, Seattle Hemp Fest. I believe Cash Hyde Foundation. Um, I think the Weed Not Greed Tour will be doing one. Um, th- there are so many added on. I'm sorry I'm not completely up to date with how many we have at this exact moment, but uh, we had been starting with just one for each state, and most of the states have been claimed at this point. I think we might have a few left over. There is a link on our Facebook and primary website, uh, which is just momsformarijuana.org, and people can still sign up for these. Like It's an open call that if you want to volunteer to do your state, and if it's not claimed yet, we are welcoming people in to represent your state and say what a difference it could make for you. Um, so, for example, maybe one of our Midwestern farming states would want to focus on the industrial applications of hemp mm-hmm. and how that could impact their local community. Or somewhere um, like Virginia could have Mount Vernon with George Washington and his active use of hemp. Um, there's a lot of different angles and ways that people can come from it. They could have a local celebrity, event, any way that they want to represent their state within the cannabis movement. Um, so we're just doing a call of creativity. Have you heard, <laughs> have you heard back from, I know you, you, you listed some of those like Cash Hyde, I'm familiar with that, mm-hmm. uh, with him. Have some of the family members, the, the dr- victims of the drug war, or anybody out there kind of expressed on what, what they were thinking of doing with their quilt to give people an idea of what they're actually going to you know do with this square piece of cloth? I, I love um, Well, we have just recently put out these invitations to these people. We have just gone public recently with the project for it, in fact, to... Um, put it out to the public. We had started with just the, the states, but we started getting so much interest from some of these, and I don't know what they have planned specifically, but there's really the sky is the limit. I know that um, our mom's organization patch is going to have several of our different logos. There are ways that you can screen print and apply things onto there. Um, we have some guidelines that are on the website that could answer questions for what is and isn't allowed. We want to keep it simple so we can travel it safely and have it stay intact but we really are very open to hearing any creative suggestions of people of what they want to do and what their vision is but we do have Jeannie Hare has signed on to do one for Jack Hare so um, that's awesome you know I'm sure she's going to focus on him and his yeah. life and his legacy so well it's all part of the tapestry of all the people who are connected and fighting on the mm-hmm. on the right side of the of the drug war right and and how people are affected by the drug war all across you know exactly. our country and also internationally too are you going to involve people I'm from other countries so. as well as well um well this year we were start hoping i believe to start it just with the states but we are hoping to branch it out internationally in future years because we are an international organization ourselves and we have currently 10 countries and a few umbrella countries on top of that. Um, but we have 10 countries around the world currently, about uh, roughly 95 chapters and sub-chapters around the world. So we, we have a pretty of big global presence. Right. And, wow. 
When, yes, Moms for when, Marijuana does. When did this start, like Moms for Marijuana? Uh, well, the first chapter started on MySpace in 2005. Uh, it was just Sarah out there networking, trying to find other people that were experiencing the same things as her, this you know, shock that we had this information that we weren't fully utilizing it. So in and seven, she found yeah. a huge network of people on the same page, and it's just grown exponentially from there. I think we've gained 15,000 likes in the past year wow. on our Facebook page. Wow. So. <laughs> I mean that's amazing. Uh, you you've been around for seven years and you got ninety five mm-hmm. chapters. Think about that, people. Yes. <laughs> like we got to stop thinking about what we're doing next week or next month or the next six months and start focusing on what we're going to do for the next five, ten, fifteen years because that's what it's about. Seven years, ninety five chapters. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and we are very proud of it. And it, t- it's been uh, a wild ride, and we are welcoming all the new chapters. We're adding more on daily. So Tell us <laughs> we're more very, about- very um, thrown away by the scope of this. But, we, you know, it's it's a testament to the movement that we are mothers around the world. And not all of us have children, and not even all of us are women. We do have some male mothers for marijuana um, because it's a mothering spirit, and it's believing in the concept of spreading awareness, education, and discussion because that's what we think that people need to do. They have a right to this information and to make up their minds accordingly because we we as mothers like to raise our children to be able to think for themselves. So mm-hmm. why should we t- I'll tell them to take someone else's opinion for it when there's facts that disprove those things that they're being told? We want them to think for themselves and make discerning, educated decisions in their life because that's going to be the best protection they can have in life. Exactly. So that's- I guess the message resounds, and I'm glad it does. <laughs> now, how, what got you initially involved in this? What made you become a mom for marijuana how did how has the drug war touched you personally or or you know people you know well i personally used to live in baltimore and i helped run a vintage clothing store with a man named tim poti and it was called dreamland clothing we did costuming for john waters movies and he was a really amazing man and he had been living successfully with hiv for nearly 20 years by self-prescribing himself medical cannabis but this is in Baltimore City, so he had to go out and do street deals to get his medicine in Baltimore, uh, this wow. HIV-positive man, yeah. and who was also taking care of his family and running this business, a very, very successful man by any means. And I was just blown away, and I saw firsthand you know, how it helped him to be a stronger, better, healthier person. It helped him better than the pharmaceuticals. I saw him go through the different trials and try different things. Mm-hmm. and what a difference it made for him. So that got my attention. I started researching it. And um, I had moved out to Portland and started meeting a lot of people within the community who are legal medical patients. And um, keeping touch with him, I discovered that his new doctor asked him to stop his cannabis use because they couldn't endorse it because it wasn't locally legal. He died within two months. Oh, my God. Wow. And it really lit a fire in my belly because I wanted better for my son. If You know, there's a medicine that works, and it's one that is proving to improve lives like that. I want that to be on the discussion table as an option for other people's babies when they get sick because we should all have the same opportunities to protect ourselves and our health and our families regardless of what state we live in. Because health is health and disease is cancer doesn't know what state you're in and it doesn't care. So children like Cash High, given the opportunity to beat cancer twice right. using cannabis oil versus my son's three-year-old in D.C., or I'm sorry, just outside of D.C. in Virginia with leukemia, was just told to make a wish because that's the best option they have for her there. And I just think that that's insulting to any parent who can see that there are children's lives being saved, there are humans having their lives saved. I, I think it would be insulting to not talk about it. So I, when I found about Moms for Marijuana, I I had to be a part of it. Wow. It, it was already done. I was already a mom for marijuana before I knew there <laughs> yeah. were others. Exactly. So I was just happy to see what a group there is out there. Yeah. We're everywhere. I love that. <laughs> that, that is the key to life is to, to just be who you already are. Isn't it? <laughs> that, that's deep. That. That's deep, Mike. Now, I just love, I love the <laughs> fact that that's, you know, that was your personal experience and that, you know, as a, I mean, moms are, moms are so, the most powerful you know, human beings uh, pretty much on the planet. I mean, they do pretty much everything. And, um, you know, 
Uh, they're also a huge voting block. They're also, you're pretty hard to argue with a mom. I mean, okay, I had plenty <laughs> of time arguing with my mom, but, you know, I think uh, that it, it, it lends uh, a sense of, you know, of credibility and not, you know, not that other organizations don't have it, but it adds that extra level of, of relatability I and I think we're unexpected. Yeah, is exactly. one thing that really works for us because people for a long time have used mothers as a scapegoat for the drug war, implying that mm -hmm. they're somehow doing us a favor and protecting yeah, think our of the children. children. But mm -hmm. the statistics, the facts, the science, it lies. You know, it, you know, they're claiming they're doing us a favor. So I, I do think we're coming from a different angle that surprises people because they don't expect us to be in favor of it. So it kind of makes them stop and give us a second listen. Because they weren't expecting it, and that exactly. surprise is hard to find nowadays. We're dated people, so when you can be surprised, you can usually find an ear who's willing to listen. And even failing that, we're mothers. We're raising tomorrow's voters. So yep, if exactly. we're raising them with an education, if we don't do it today, we're going to do it tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. And raising people that are able to think critically and support. When you're a mom that becomes a grandmother and then maybe has some medical problems or whatever. I mean, it's just, it's the circle of, the circle of life mm -hmm. <laughs> and supporting. Yeah, I want to know that they're going to have the best options to take care of me, too. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it's an investment in your future and your kids' future. And in, in society, in the world, in humanity, everybody. I really yep. believe that it can benefit so many different parts of our society, our job situation, our industrial situation, our environmental situation, nutritional. There's so much that it stands to offer our community that it's ridiculous not to talk about Good, it. Goodwill, so, too. Good I want to take every chance I get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you what do you plan on doing with the uh, with the quilt once it's finished once it's completed, or is it ever um, well? <laughs> is it it's going to be, be an ongoing keeps growing. Project. We yeah. have to continue it just on and on and on. Um, but what we are doing currently is we are pulling together some regional conferences that we're going to have around the country starting in I believe it's October in New York and then down to DC in December. Um, I believe on the day that cannabis was originally prohibited would be the, the anniversary date that we're having that D.C. regional conference. And then we're going to have them all around the country. And we're going to bring the quilt to these conferences and display them and call the media and to address what we're doing and say, we would like to welcome you to hear what we have to say, what we're doing and why. Because we're representing a large group of people who just want to talk. So let's exactly. see who's willing to listen and just invite everybody to come be a part of it and to learn something and get the dialogue going that's great and a quilt is a beautiful metaphor too for you know all being together in the same struggle and also you know the comfort that a Definitely. quilt provides and the com you know i think that's great to make it a visual um you know issue and that's something that you also have on your on your website um, what is your website? Moms from Moms from Marijuana. Marijuana. Mm -hmm. org. Yes, org. Okay. And, um, yeah, you have a bunch of uh, posts up there about individual uh, victims of the drug, you know, of the drug victims war. Victims of the drug war. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty moving section exactly. there. I, I can't go more than a few pages through before I need my box of tissues. There are some really, really powerful stories there. Some of them are wins. Some of them are, you know, lessons learned. But there are some really amazing testimonials, both of the victims of the drug war section and our just our testimonial section, where anybody is welcome to submit to us their testimonial of their experience with cannabis and why they want to get this conversation going. And um, we, we offer this forum up here for anybody. And if there's a victim of the drug war that we have not included, please send them our way. We want to tell mm -hmm. the stories. That's awesome. Um, they can send them in to mom at momsformarijuana.org. We are happy to hear your stories. So, you know, cause it, everybody has one. Everybody knows somebody, somebody's been impacted in some way. And if they haven't, they just haven't realized they have yet because everybody at this point knows somebody who's died of cancer that might have had better treatment options. It impacts everybody. So we just want to share those stories. Wow. Thank you so much for spending time with us today, Betty, and telling us about this great project that you're doing. 
Oh, great. Thanks for having me. I, I'm always happy to share what we're doing. I, I'm very proud of what we do. I'm, you should be. It's, uh, I mean, this is, a, this is an excellent project, and I hope to we, we can get involved. I know Nikki Smokes, who's, who uh, works for Free Mass Media, who supports our show. She's making, uh, she posted a picture recently over the past couple of days She's of her working on, working on her square for the quilt uh, with her very cute little cool. dog in the picture, too. So you can check it, that out on our, uh, on our Facebook page. Um, and uh, you, for this round, pe- people can still submit till September for this round. And, and mm-hmm. if you miss September, you could go for the next round. Like, like Betty said, exactly. it's going to be ongoing and it's going to be traveling. And I hope we can get you up to Boston to do yeah. the feature. Oh, definitely. Well, we do have a forming Boston Moms for Marijuana chapter. You can look them up on Facebook. It's facebook.com backslash Boston Moms number four MJ. Awesome. So you can get in touch with us there. We'd love to team up and do whatever we can to work together. Awesome. That's excellent. I think we'll we'll be linking to that on our on our Facebook page as well, so that any of our listeners, if they didn't catch it uh, today, then they can uh, they can link up with that. And it seems to be a pretty inclusive community and a, and a welcoming one, and and one that we definitely appreciate. Where you guys are are doing this, and it's happening all over the country, and uh, the more of us. Fighting the good fight, the better, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah, we definitely want to include everyone. So thanks for helping us share the word. Absolutely. So that's momsformarijuana.org or facebook.com slash Boston Moms number four MJ to get involved with this organization and hopefully we'd love to have you like uh, Mike said have you uh, display the quilt at some point maybe at the Freedom Rally mm-hmm. who knows <laughs> so I'm, I would love to figure something out so great. stay in touch we'll figure something out for All sure right. alright thank you Betty thank you so much for being <laughs> on the show That was alright thanks guys take care that Bye-bye. was uh, Betty Bye-bye. Retro from momsformarijuana.org I think she was calling in from Portland Oregon